humans, the dominant life form on Earth. A seven billion strong planet-wide race capable of great technological marvels and constant innovation. We became this wondrous people from a loose band of hunter-gatherers scattered round the globe some 10,000 years ago. Before that time, humans are painted to be nomadic hunter-gatherers, cavemen, an illiterate people lacking the ability to navigate the seas or cultivate crops, isolated communities of tribes living a simple existence. Lacking the wheel or knowledge of the stars, they built no lasting monuments or structures of any kind anywhere. We are told that the current epoch of civilization and technology represents humanity's one and only rise to advanced civilization and global influence. But this is not the case. 60,000 years ago, humans just like us lived on every continent. They were just as intelligent, just as skilled. They were the top predator on Earth and they could cross the seas, ascend the mountain tops and command fire. What did they do? What happened to them? And how did they become us? The evidence for our earlier and faster development and exodus from Africa is not circumstantial or theoretical. It is based upon science, well-documented archaeology and genetics. Humans underwent a great leap forward that only now are we beginning to acknowledge or understand. There are gaps in our knowledge and it might be tempting to fill them with speculation about great civilizations and lost technologies, but the facts themselves are astounding. The facts speak of humans who studied the stars to navigate the seas, utilized maths in problem solving, understood botany, humans who could craft any material available to them into precision tools and weapons, marvelous works of art or ocean-going vessels, humans who made music, painted pictures, mourned their dead, valued life and celebrated fertility. You would recognize them and they would recognize you because we are identical. Discovered in 2001, submerged under the waters of the Bay of Cambay in India, is a 9,500 year old city. The city is approximately 120 feet beneath the water near Gujarat on the northwest coast of India. Five miles long by two miles wide, it is huge by the standards of ancient cities. Its age was derived from carbon dating of artifacts brought up from the site, including pieces of wood and human bone. Sonar evidence of the rectilinear outline of stone blocks used in its construction indicates that they are larger than any other man-made stone blocks known to archaeology. The Bay of Cambay's underwater city has been largely ignored by the West, perhaps because it would mean the overthrow of the mainstream Western view that the Fertile Crescent area, including the Tigris-Euphrates Valley, was the birthplace of civilization. Yet, even the oldest cities in the Fertile Crescent are perhaps 8,000 years old, while most are 5,000 years or less. The discovery in Cambay astounded scientists because it predates all other finds in the area, suggesting a much longer history of civilization than was first assumed. It is believed the area was submerged when the ice caps melted in the last ice age. Who built this city? Who lived there? And how did they live? Are we to believe that a group of humans who had not yet developed agriculture or invented pottery suddenly 
created a vast city with no prior development or settlements or evolution of social structures, that its citizens were hunter-gatherers and that the millions who lived there were landlocked hunters. The people who built this sunken city were advanced architects of stone buildings. Its inhabitants could only be supported by trade and agriculture. The need for such a place could only come about from a long period of growing population and social order, built upon skills acquired thousands or tens of thousands of years before. The Great Pyramid of Giza the Great Pyramid has long fascinated archaeologists and historians. The orthodox story of its purpose, construction and age are almost certainly incorrect. For 4,000 years it was the tallest building on earth. It's claimed that as if by magic humanity one day built the greatest stone monument on the planet out of the blue with no provenance, no development, no antecedent civilization or culture. It is, we are asked to believe, it grew out of the sand, perfectly aligned with the cosmos, precisely constructed from some of the hardest rocks on earth, containing internal chambers and passageways impractical for burial, useless for ceremony, containing no artifacts, inscriptions or evidence of its use as a tomb whatsoever at all. Only the Great Pyramid stands out as being of ancient and even to this day unknown origin. There are more ancient sites like the Great Pyramid all over the earth. In Japan, Scotland, England, South America, the Middle East and Turkey. But the Great Pyramid and the Cambay Bay site should be enough to convince the most ardent rationalist of the proof of ancient civilization. That humanity bore the fruit of civilization before us is no longer mythology. That we have risen up and been swept away repeatedly is not conjecture. Our history has been revolutionized by new discoveries. Our view of the past becomes clearer the longer and deeper we dig. Yet one truth and one sobering fact looms above all else in the new history of humanity. Civilization is a brief and delicate flower that blooms in short, forgiving periods of stability. We should celebrate our current circumstances and take steps to prepare for an uncertain future. Because, as the past reveals in stark, unforgiving terms, nothing lasts forever.